I want to thank everyone for coming today. This is a great moment for the city. Uh, the Brown Street Clock uh, is an icon, and uh, today we will dedicate it. Uh, I'm Dan Siglovich, president of the Greater Manesson Historical Society, and the Greater Manesson Historical Society is celebrating two notable anniversaries during the year 2014 that have special meaning to the city of Manesson. 150 years ago, in 1864, Manesson founder and noted industrialist William Henry Donner was born in Columbus, Indiana. 33 years later, he would construct Manesson's first industry, the National Tin Plate Company, and move his family into a newly built 25-room, three-story home on Parkway. He would then turn his attention across the river and become a founder of Denora, Pennsylvania. In the same year of 1864, as the War of the Rebellion raged across the northern and southern states, the youngest colonel in the Union Army would lead a dismounted cavalry charge against rebel positions at Fort Starr at the Third Battle of Winchester. For his heroic efforts, Colonel James M. Schoonmaker would be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. It would be the colonel who came here in 1894 and purchased the Manown and McMahon farms with dreams of building a town on this site. Together with Donner, the colonel and his East Side Land Company would create a town filled with industry that lined the banks of the Monongahela River and would attract thousands of immigrant laborers from two dozen nationalities to settle here. Soon, well-known industrial entities, such as the American Sheet and Tin Plate Company, the Page Woven Wire Fence Company, and the Pittsburgh Steel Company, built large factories that built thick black smoke and cinders into the sky 24 hours a day. Many smaller concerns also established themselves in the early years of the 20th century such as the Manesson Foundry, the Manesson Brewery, the Manesson Bottling Works, the Manesson Box Company, the Manesson Brick Works, and the Manesson Distillery. They all employed people eager to settle in the area and raise families. It was one of these small entrepreneurs, Benjamin Eli Brown, who came to Manesson in 1906 and opened a jewelry store at 532 Donner Avenue. He and his brother Walter, who owned a jewelry store in Tenora, had worked on a model for an efficient, weather-resistant, reliable, and reasonably priced street clock for the past several years. An experimental model was set up in Manesson. By the spring of 1909, they were ready to market their new model. Plans called for one clock to be made per day, costing between $125 and $150 and weighing approximately 1,200 pounds. In July of 1909, one of the clocks was installed at the corner of 5th and Donner in front of the formidable Manesson Savings and Trust Company building. The Brown Jewelry Catalog stated there were 13 models to choose from. They could be purchased for $15 a month on a play payment plan. The new industry was a success, and Brown Street clocks could be found on city streets across the United States. Today, there are about two dozen remaining Brown Street clocks still in existence. Walter Brown died in 1920. He had sold his shares in the company to his brother years before, although some of the clocks may have been assembled at the Dodora location. The Mott's Lumber Company of Manesson made the clock patterns. The Manesson Foundry made the castings, and the glass came from the Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company. Benjamin Brown died in 1922. The last Brown Street clock was built in 1929 or 1930 and shipped to Massachusetts. 
the business became Brown's clothing shop with Mrs. Lucille Brown, Benjamin's daughter-in-law, operating a dress shop in the back of the jewelry store. Together, today, we gather together to dedicate this symbol of Medicine's industrial heritage. May it be a reminder of the many immigrants with their rich traditions and customs who traveled across the oceans to work in Manesson's vast industries and help build this valley. May it also be a symbol of the past, joining together with the present as we work together to build a new and vital Manesson. Thank you. State Representative Ted Harhai, uh, come and add a few words. I'm really happy to be here because I'm, I'm very historically minded to begin with, and very much so uh, having been the mayor about 14 years ago when we had our 100th anniversary. And every month we had a program. I was pretty insistent upon that. Uh, I could be a little hard-headed at times, I guess. And, um, but we did, we had an event every single month. And we made something and people thought this event. And now, but I think that uh, it just showed a lot of our resolve to, to have those events. A lot of people came out, a lot of people came back, a lot of our founders came, so we had a great time. During that year, we had booked to purchase a, a Brown Street clock. And it was this one. And at the time, the, the gentleman wanted $30,000. We had about 40000 bucks left. So we felt that we wanted to try to get this clock and get it down here and whatever. So we chose to put $40,000 into electrical work, lighting, and everything in the city park. We moved the cultural heritage off of printing because probably 90% of the people were complaining that it cuts off traffic, it cuts the down in the field. So we had it in the park. It's, it's a shame that they don't continue that practice. We ended up putting 40,000 into the city park, which was a good move anyway. And if you were at the amphitheater last night, you'll see how beautiful that was. Uh, in a word, comfortable. And that was that says it all for that place. It's just a real, real nice showcase for the city, for us. Uh, I think it's a great venue for us. I know there's a little controversy, but still yet, it's done, it's over. You have to move forward. And, and uh, just a fantastic venue. I counted over 230 some people. I spent close to maybe 270. Didn't look like it because it's so large. So it was it was great. It's a great night, especially if you like oldies. But back to the clock. We didn't get a Brown Street clock, and I really wanted one, and we just couldn't raise the money. But I was talking with an assistant to see a very good friend of mine, Day Day Perosi, and he was uh, with the Gold Majors, and they used to take the buses. Remember when you guys first became Gold Majors? Well, they were in uh, uh, Faneuil Hall, Quincy Market in Massachusetts, in Boston. And uh, everybody went into a store, an athletic store, and then took a pair of and they had some Joe Montana stuff in there. He says, oh, we want to go look at this. He said, ah, I don't want to see that. So he down, he leans on a clock. He plans his foot up there, and he looks down, and he thought, thought he saw Manesson, but he wasn't sure. And sure enough, it was a Brown Street clock from Manesson. It, uh, it didn't have the date on it. About two months later, I had the ability or the means to get to Boston for uh, an event, and I went down there especially to find out where that clock was, where it was in the Quincy Market, and it was exactly where he said, right, right outside the store. The store was a different store; it was more artsy, crafty thing. And uh, but it was exciting to see, you know, Vanessa PA right in the middle of Boston in their uh, cultural historical district, actually. So. Um, uh, it is an honor to be here. It's my hometown. I'm always happy to do stuff in my hometown. Uh, I get beat up, but that's life. But I'll get beat up a little bit to have things like this, which is a great venue. It's done with great taste and uh, a little different, something different in Vanessa. We have this great facility here now. Uh, libraries improved. Uh, we've got to move forward, and hopefully that will continue to happen. But I want to thank everybody for coming out. Thank the people that contributed. I was one of them. I don't want to say that somebody almost broke my arm to, to get money out of my pocket, but it was close. But I did, and it's a hefty sum, I thought. But um, I was very pleased to contribute. It benefits my hometown. It benefits us. It's just something that's going to sit here. You look at it, and you have pride, and it says, 1898 City of Manessa. Anyway, thank you for your attention. Thank you for coming.
We have a special guest today who will be cutting the rivet, Fulvia Chichester. And I, a little bird has told me that it's go, going to be your birthday. Uh oh. Uh, we got to sing to her. So we have to sing to her. Uh oh. So, birthday to you. Happy birthday. the Historical Society will be celebrating Founders Day next month on Saturday, August the 16th at Vanessa City Park. And it will be an event to run from 10 until 5 that day. There will be food booths, vendors. We'll have uh, two groups of Civil War reenactors that will be setting up camp there. And they will show what life was like in a Civil War camp. For children, there will be games, and uh, there will be dress-up, and there will also be uh, marching, and they'll be able to uh, do things uh, such as enrolling in uh, Colonel Schoonmaker's regiment and march with the soldiers. So we hope you will spread the word, and you will show up that day, uh, because we do, will be celebrating uh, William Donner's birthday and the 150th anniversary of Colonel Schoonmaker's cavalry. And when this is over today, we have refreshments and food inside, out of the sun. And to please go in there and uh, have some of them and uh, chat and enjoy yourself. I'm gonna go over. Tuesday, I forget what 
and she had to be cool. Can I get you some up here? Yeah. I'm just so much. She was like, oh, I'm just much better in here. I'll tell you what I 